Hello, welcome to the dental preview. Today I'm gonna demonstrate the anatomical landmark of mandible. So first thing first we start with the name of the structures and later on we'll discuss them individually alright. So here we have the mandible. So there are many structures. So the first structure is the labial frenum, this red structure. It's a labial frenum and again depressed structure here. It's called labial vestibule and again the red structure here. It's a buccal frenum and again depressed structure. It's called buccal vestibule and this red structure you see here. It's called retromolar pad and this blue structure. It's a buccal self area and this green structure here. It's called the crest of the alveolar ridge. And whatever structure are present in this side, it's same in here. And again, we have a frenum. It's called lingual frenum. And this skin colored structure here. It's a alveolar lingual sulcus. So this this structure is divided into three regions, like anterior region, medial region, and posterior region. So these are the structure present in the mandible, and they are ca classified into different categories, like uh, like limiting structure, supporting structure, and relief areas. So first thing we'll talk about the limiting structure. So limiting structure determine the extension of our denture. Like uh, this structures limits the extension of denture. And <clears throat> there are many structures. Of, uh, so the first one is the labial frenum. So this is the active frenum. Unlike in the maxillary cast, it was a passive frenum, right? And here's the active frenum because there's an attachment of orbicularis oris muscles. So it's an active frenum. And the next one we have is the labial vestibule. Actually, there's an influence of uh, mentalis muscles as well as the orbicularis oris. And again, we have here a frenum. And this is called the buccal frenum. And it's also the active frenum because there's attachment of uh, buccinator muscles as well as depressor anguli oris muscles. So this structure limited extension of denture. And the next one we have here is the buccal vestibule. Uh, okay, and here also we have the influence of buccinator muscles as well as masseter muscles. So, <laughs> in the distal buccal area, we have a masseteric notch here, somewhere here. So this is a it's a notch-like structure that is present when you take the impression. Uh, it is due to the influence of masseter muscles. So when the masseter muscle contract, it produces a bulge. I mean, it pushes the buccinator muscles and then it produces a bulge on this area. So when you take the impression, you get a notch like structure and this structure determine the shape of the denture in this area. So that's a masseteric notch. And the next limiting structure we have here is the lingual frenum. It's also the active frenum because there's the attachment of genioglossus and genuine hard muscles so it's an active frenum and the next one we have here is the alveolingual sulcus so like i've said it is divided into three region anterior region middle region and the posterior region so the anterior region the anterior region it's also called the premyeloid fossa or sublingual region and <clears throat> next one we have the the medial region and it's also called the myeloid region so it extends from the premyeloid fossa up to the uh, posterior end of the myeloid ridge, so it would be up to so it would be up to he, because uh, premyeloid region are very prominent in the premolars and molar, and it would be up to here the middle region actually, and uh, and the last one is the posterior region, and this region is also called the retromyeloid region or lateral throat form. So um, it extends from the posterior end of the my, posterior end of the myeloid ridge up to the retromyeloid curtain. So what's retromyeloid curtain? Actually, it's a wall-like structures that is present in this area. So when you insert your finger in this area that is below the tongue, you get a wall-like structure that you can when you reach here you won't be able to move your finger beyond this area. So that structure is called retromyeloid curtain. So these are the limiting structure. Now the last limiting structure is the pterygomandible raphe. It's a structure that is present in this area and it is usually formed by the fibers of buccinator and superior constrictor muscles. 
now let's talk about the supporting areas so basically we have a two supporting areas that is primary and secondary and on the primary we have a buccal shelf area this this structure is a buccal shelf area so <clears throat> This is a primary structure because underneath this tissue we have a compact bone, not the cancellous one. So these areas are very resistant to resorption. So, and the masticatory fossils are also the perpendicular to this area, so it's a primary. And the area bonded to this area it's kind of important. So, so we medially we have a crest of alveolaris that is toward the midline, and the lingually we have an external oblique line that is present on the external surface of mandible so when you see the mandible you could see a line running in this area and that's an external oblique line and <coughs> uh, anteriorly is the buccal frenum and the distally that is away from the midline is the retromolar pad so these are the structure that is bounded to the buccal shelf area and the next primary structure supporting area is the retromolar pad it also act as a primary supporting areas. Now let's talk about the secondary supporting areas. So the first structure is the um, these slopes. I mean lingual slopes and the buccal slope of the residual alveolaris. These slopes act as the secondary supporting structures. So these all slopes you see here. It runs from here up this whole slopes, these slopes, and here this slope. It acts as a secondary supporting areas, and in addition to this, all the vestibules like this, buccal vestibule, lingual vestibule, alveolar lingual cells, it also contribute up to some extent. Now let's talk about the relief structures. So the first structure we have is the crest of the alveolaris. It's a soft tissue that needs to be relieved because it could be traumatized and cause it further complication. So we need to relieve this structure. And the next one is the mental foramen. Okay, this foramen is present on the external surface. That would be bit below the second molar, premolar, so it'd be in this area. So it uh, it has uh, some nerves and vessels like mental foramen nerves, mental nerves and mental vessels. So it needs to be relief. And the next one is the genital tubercle. It is present in this area. There are a few important muscles like genioglossus that attach to the tongue and genioahyoid muscles that attach to the hyoid muscle hyoid bone so this structure needs to be relieved and the next one is the torus mandibularis it's a, a bony elevation like in maxillary so it is present on the lingual side this area that is that would be between first premolars and second premolars so <clears throat> this structure needs to be relieved and usually it is done by surgical and the last one is the myelohydris. Uh, well, it runs from the symphysis menti, that is, in over from here, all over this areas, that is, posterior myelohydris. So it's uh, muscles, and the, these muscles are very prominent in between premolars and molars, and this structure needs to be relieved so <clears throat> to prevent uh, further complication. So these are the limb. Uh, these are the relief structures. Thank you.